All right, so uh, let's get a wrap of where we're at at the moment and perhaps what we should be looking forward to. Pete McGuire joining us from XM. Pete, a very good Monday morning to you. So, uh, of course, what we do need to digest is uh, a change of the political landscape in Australia. Good morning, Andrew. Yeah, we certainly do. We need to inhale and uh, appreciate what the dynamics are and how that's going to play. It's a little bit early to call as far as market sentiment and what uh, what investors will think of this, um, uh, you know, the, the new government. So it's just a little bit of a wait and see. He's certainly got his hands full. Inflation and global concerns with recessionary fears as far as Europe and possibly washing over to the US. So, yeah, there's no shortage as far as news, Andrew. Yeah, uh, Labor certainly does have a large shopping list just as far as obviously trying to uh, what would say is reform or at least fix uh, problems. Uh, yeah. Child care, uh, other social services, of course, uh, is yes. going to mean spending. It certainly is. It's going to be good in the sense of for the economy. It's going to be hard to get people. I would have thought that that would be a situation that they need to manage and manage closely due to low unemployment as far as you know the numbers everyone that wants a job so the inflationary uh, pressures as far as wage everyone will put their hand out probably for a wage rise so that's probably a good thing i'm not sure whether uh, the in the uh, the investors or naturally the public companies are like that but the situation is that with high inflation naturally everyone wants a larger pay rise all right, Pete, so taking a look more broadly, what's going on globally at the moment now, of course, yep. um, risk sentiment was a little steadier on Friday. Nonetheless, it remains vulnerable. Absolutely, Andrew. The, you know, the US was flat. I noticed that the, uh, the NASDAQ was down 0.3, but yeah, that's nothing compared to what we see some nights at down 4.3. So uh, I'm not expecting any surprises this week. We've got a couple of big issues coming out as far as flash PMIs and uh, inflation numbers, FOMC minutes, and a couple of other things to add uh, a storyline to. US dollars come under a little bit of pressure to the downside. It's sitting now at around about that, just under 103. So it's well off that 104.50, giving up some of that uh, heat, and it's, it was exhausted to the upside. That I'm not suggesting that it's going to stay that level. It might even hit a little bit higher yet. So um, it's just a little bit of a interesting week to take stock. Yeah, just taking a look at that chart we've got there. Uh, of course, yeah. the question is whether we have reached peak inflation in the states. Well, that's right, Andrew. I'm not sure whether we have. Uh, many analysts are saying that it's got a few more points to go yet. So are we going to hit that magic double digit number? Uh, again, we've just got to wait and see how it rolls over summer and the situation. But it's certainly picking up if you look at UK at 9% and what's happening across you know, Asia and Europe. So yeah, oil prices haven't given up. We've still got those sitting at that 112, 110 to 112 number. So there's very high energy costs, gas prices and all of that. So the, the you know, the, 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 the man on the street and the woman on the street are being hit every day and inflation is really having a, you know, a crimping effect as far as their spending power. Yeah, we're going to get a reader on the, on the US economy, of course, this week with the latest growth figures. Yeah, absolutely, Andrew. It'll be interesting to see how that, uh, how that moves forward. I, I think that it's been relatively strong. And when you're thinking about what it's doing globally, it's performing quite well. We know that uh, US outbid China as far as growth in the fourth quarter last year, according to Biden's um, you know, wonderful thoughts on that in January. So maybe we're going to see a similar number rolling forward for the, the, for the last quarter and overall uh, positive tones coming out of the US. But the recessionary fears are one and when you think of the likes of uh, Lloyd Blankfein saying, you know, recessions could be on our doorstep very, very shortly, mm. then that's a worry, I think, for Main Street. I think we've got another chart, actually, just comparing uh, Europe and the US just as far as their economies are concerned. There we go. Uh, talk yeah. us through that. Well, there you are. I mean, you know, that gives us an indication we're not certainly in contraction period or, or contraction under that 50 but we're sitting there around that 55 to 57 sort of headline. And you're looking there as far as US composite, the red, it's starting to dip. And the Eurozone composite, they seem to be, you know, very much married. 
the UK is a little bit better at the moment, but if they're all trending towards that maybe 53, 54 sort of handle, Andrew, and that's why that summer period is going to be interesting, whether the consumer comes out and spends, 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 or we see, you know, a real dip under that 50 and to a contraction period. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me, Pete. Oh, uh, meanwhile, next door, New Zealand. And uh, expectations, they're going to continue to lift rates given what's going on with inflation there at the moment. Yeah, exactly right, Andrew. And a 50 basis point, I'm not sure whether they can afford it, but that's what they're talking. So uh, maybe we're going to join the queue on that one. So there we are. New Zealand will be off again to the races. Uh, where they've got an, they had an overheated property market. I'm not sure how that's performing now in the sense of contraction with price. But uh, it's the only way is up, and uh, that I'm not sure whether they'll replicate that coming into the next quarter as well. May give it a break for a month or two and just see the impact as far as that 50 basis points. Interesting to see what they do here as well, Andrew, whether well, we follow that mantra. Well, speaking of which, let, let's come back home, take a look at how Australia's economy is performing. We've got another chart here just as yeah. to where we're likely to go, and of course, whether we're going to head for recession, um, obviously the, the fears of recession are much more muted here than they are in the States. Absolutely, yeah. We're reasonably in a not a bad situation, though with inflation, I mean, maybe we're just behind the curve and we haven't caught up to the other major economies. That's going to be a work in progress to analyse that coming forward. We understand the impact as far as a, a, uh, an election and everyone puts you know, the hand on the brake. So the overall feel is uh, onward and upward. We're building, you know, building and building and building as far as apartments and homes uh, and the, the talk in the town as far as, you know, some of those big construction firms may be going under. That's not a good sign, Andrew. So, you know, the flow on effect with all of that. So it's yeah, very much a, a wait and see how we perform over the next couple of months. Pete, <clears throat> terrific stuff. Thanks for setting us up for the week on a Monday morning. Have Have a great week, Andrew. Cheers. Thank you.